I have a question. And um, hear me out. It's legit. I've been thinking about this a lot lately. For my single people, especially if you're close to 30 or in your 30s. Thank you. Come again. Life's great, right? Like, it's so peaceful. I mean, if you're doing it right, life's good. It's peaceful. No problems. You do whatever you want. Like, it's amazing over here. So how, like, when do you get a partner? Like, when, when does marriage come Subscribe into play? Subscribe now. Because if you're doing good and you're peaceful and life's good, why would you let somebody else in? So how do you get married? Is it just like somebody great comes along and then you're like, you know what? That looks nice. I'm going to do that. Or do you just like, hey, I should probably do this? Or like, how does this happen? You can't make this shit up. Regret being a slut. I'm grateful for the ability to control my reproductive cycle and make my own money. But that freedom has come at a price. The dark side of the sexual revolution is that even though it liberated women, unyoking sex from the consequences has primarily benefited men. But if I'm honest with myself, of the dozens of men I've been with, at least the ones I remember, I can only think of a handful I don't regret. The rest I would put in the category of casual, which I would define as sex that is either meaningless or mediocre or both. If I get really honest with myself, I'd say most of these usually drunken encounters left me feeling empty and demoralized and worthless. I wouldn't have said that at the time, though. At the time, I would have told you I was liberated, even while I tried to drink away the sick feeling of rejection while my most recent hookup didn't call me back. At the time, I would have said one night stands made me feel emboldened. But in reality, I was using sex like a drug, trying unsuccessfully to fill a hole inside me with men. Pun intended. I know regretting most of my sexual encounters is not something a sex-positive feminist who used to write a column for Playboy is supposed to admit. And for years, I didn't. Let me be clear. Being a slut and sleeping with a lot of men is not the only behavior I regret. Even more damaging was what I told myself in order to justify the fact that I was disposable to these men. I told myself I didn't care. I didn't care when a man ghosted me. Ugh. Uh, I didn't care when he left in the middle of the night or hinted that he wanted me to leave. The walks of shame, the blackouts, the anxiety. The lie I told myself for decades was, I'm not in pain, I'm empowered. I knew it would be hard to read this. I lost my virginity at 17 to my boss at a restaurant where I worked. And a year later, I experienced my first sexual trauma. I felt damaged and dirty, and I blamed myself. Everyone responds differently to these situations. I dealt with the overwhelming shame by becoming hypersexual and promiscuous. The culture was right there to pick me up and dust me off. I doubled down on being a proud slut and internalized the biggest and most damaging lie that loveless sex is empowering. I basked in the girl power glow of that delusion for decades, weaponizing my sexuality while convincing myself I was full of the divine feminine. I was full of shit. I told myself that because I could seduce man, I was powerful. But as Perry says in her book, women can all too easily fail to recognize that being desired is not the same thing as being held in high esteem. Deep down inside, I knew that to be the case. But as a defense mechanism, I created a man-eater persona. My mantras were rigid. You can either have a career or a relationship, but you can't have both. Intimacy is creepy. Motherhood and children are a trap. Sex is only about power. Another set of lies built on lies built on trauma. When a man I slept with had the courtesy to reach out, I mistook relief for happiness, rewiring my brain to be grateful for the bare minimum. The saddest realization is how low I set the bar. A lifetime of allowing myself to be the other woman, taken for granted or treated like a doormat under the false pretense of being empowered, came to head one night with the arrival of a text message from an on-again, off-again lover. Good night, baby. I love you, it said, quickly followed by wrong person. Rock bottom doesn't always look like losing everything or ending up in jail. I wanted to be able to have meaningless sex like a guy, but it didn't work. Today's youth are fed an even more dangerous lie than the one that was fed about loveless sex. I was told sex doesn't matter. They're being told biology doesn't matter. This is a tragedy. I regret being a slut. 
I regret it because I regret that those men can say they slept with me. As Gen X women in particular really relate to this. And it's like they're stumbling back from a war being like, go back. <laughs> it was a lie. It's a trap. It just seems like women who have been sold this kind of uh, millennials, too, in particular, the like people who grew up with sex in the city and this idea that we can just have sex with the men consequence free and that it doesn't somehow damage our soul. A lot of women have said that they identify with this. The problem with so much of this stuff is that you s keep doing damage to yourself. At least I did in, in my attempt to keep proving to myself that sex was empowering, that I could have sex like a man. I kept damaging myself, damaging my spirit and soul in ways that I didn't really fully comprehend at the time. I was too young and I was too high or drunk in many instances. And you can see when I read the piece, it's still painful because I wish I knew better. And I guess part of the reason that I wrote this piece is for my daughter. I want her to know better. And for all the young women out there, you don't have to play that game. If you feel in your heart, like, I don't think I can have sex with someone and not get attached. And I don't know that person. And I feel like it's very intimate. Though, you're right. Those are that. That's true. <laughs> women. <laughs> <laughs> There was before you, and there was during you. For some reason, I never thought there would be an after you. Women handle rejection very differently to men. Men just kind of take it on the chin. Women will start entire movements. Women <laughs> when a woman discovers that she is not a man's preference, it, it cuts her deep, you know? She's more likely to be like, How dare you? You have stolen my dreams. Who am I here with? Leah. Meredith. I'm Lex. Mackenzie. August O'Neil out here visiting from Phoenix. So in your last relationship, what did you do wrong and what your ex do wrong? I got with them. That's what I did wrong. And they cheated. That's what they did wrong. Niggas ain't shit. They started talking to my best friend. Oh. So you ain't do nothing wrong? No. She perfect, huh? Yo. <laughs> I did nothing wrong because I'm perfect. <laughs> he was just insecure the whole entire time. I ain't do nothing wrong. I ain't never do nothing wrong. You feel me? You cheating ass bitch, You feel me? I ain't do nothing wrong. Mine was a narcissistic bitch. I was perfect. <laughs> Sensational. I would rather take advice from single women than married women because most of the married women I... You know what? I would rather take weight loss advice from someone who's overweight than someone who's in shape. <laughs> See how much sense that does not make? That's why you're single. Well, let's be nice. Yeah. Let's be nice. We don't have to go there. <laughs> I mean, you're not raw.